the film? Was it last year or the last year? Twenty twenty twenty. Twenty. Okay, great. It was filmed in Jordan. Right, great. Okay. Um, all right, we are about to begin. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you've been with us before, welcome back. Uh, if you have Q and questions, please put them in the Q and A portal. Okay, now we can begin. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, well, welcome to those of you who are joining us for the first time. If you've been with us before, welcome back. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A portal and we'll get to them as time allows. And I'd like to give special thanks to Bestil Radisic, whose efforts made today's conversation possible. All right, <clears throat> stand by and we will begin. Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Stream's post-film conversation for Women of Steel. My name is Eric Seiler, and I'm a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Women of Steel, Abari um, Abada Jabri, Jabi, a Jordanian resident of Qatar who holds a bachelor's degree in mass communication and broadcast journalism from Qatar University. Jabbar is an aspiring filmmaker who has made some films over the years. His latest film, Women of Steel, is something that we're going to talk about today. Hello, Obada, and welcome. Hi, how are you, Eric? Thank you I'm, for hosting me. Well, you're quite welcome. I'm doing quite well. It's great to have you here. Um, Women of Steel, this is such a um, really intimate look at the life of you know this woman and her family is this someone that you knew how did you come about to make this documentary uh actually this is my home city i'm jordanian i live in qatar but every year i visit my country jordan so one day i was passing by through my holiday in jordan and i met this my this woman uh, her name is Amma muhammad and uh, from it was in 2016 when I met her first time. And from there we started our relation, like we started as a friend. And then I asked her if I can do it. And she told me, I trust you enough and you can do it. So what was it about her um, that um, made you want to create a documentary? Was it her lifestyle, her personality? What was it? Uh, honestly speaking, like when I started uh, this journey with this film, it was all about the woman, like the mindset about the Middle Eastern woman and about women in general in the Middle East. I want to change that. I want uh, the people to know more about our, our women in the Middle East and about Jordan, especially like uh, they are really strong. They need the opportunity. They need uh, more empowering. Uh, to, to, to continue in their life, to, to, to survive sometimes. And what I saw in Umm Muhammad, that she's a very good example and she's a really good uh, person to tell uh, the world about it. Like if, if, if you show the film and you see how she's struggling to help her family, this is, this is really nice. This is give you the motivation to keep trust in those women in the, and give them more power and give them more chance and opportunities. Oh, uh, well, absolutely. That's a, a, a great story to tell, especially since um, I guess it's, a, it's usually a, you think of people in her part of the world as a male dominated society. So, um, you know, to empower her and show that this is another side is really um, uh, great. Uh, so, with, with her lifestyle, uh, how long did you follow her around? Uh, how many days of filming did you do? Okay, there is, there is two parts here. Uh, in 2016, when I know her, I started filming, but I didn't have the enough, enough equipment and enough experience. So the footage was really bad, honestly. In 2016, 17, it was really bad. Then I went to Ritipan. He's a Cambodian uh, fr French uh, director. 
um, and I ask him for help, like uh, as a mentor. And then he gave me the advices. In 2019, I went to Jordan again, and I spent the three months with Muhammad. Uh, not not because I need uh, amount of footage, but because I need to 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 get in, in a distance where I'm very close to them. You need to gain the trust. You need to be very close to them, and this will 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 take time. To, to, to get this trust, like I have some scene where they are sleeping and to get that, you need to spend more time. So I spent three months with them in 2019 uh, and it was every day in a daily routine. And it was really good because I spent time also with them talking, chilling, doing nothing. It's not only filming, it's a, it's a whole process. And this is why I love documentary actually. Oh, great. Okay, I, I see. That's a, a, about building trust and for her to op open up. So what, um, since you spent a, a lot of time with the family and um, some time filming, what are some things that did not make the film that, you know, you learned about the family? Uh, come again, because I can... Uh... Oh, oh, well, what are some things that are not in the documentary that you left out that, you know, you would like to tell us? Uh, what I would say that this family uh, has a problem because uh, the people are not supporting them. Whoever like, they need support. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, the father, he's uh, a special need. And, yeah. and, and those people need a special care from whoever, like I'm not mentioning anyone here, but in general, we need to support them as a community, as a government, as whoever, like we need to support them. And I couldn't like, I want to mention that. I want to mention how the people are right now because the people, like our world right now is very busy and the people, they don't have this connection again where they know about each other and they support each other. Uh, it's, not, it's not something good but something that I would love the people to know that Umm Muhammad and this type of family need the support, need the support from the community, need the support from their neighbor. They need support. Even it's not financial support. Uh, it could be emotional, like uh, it, it could be a word, like appreciating them. It would be great. This is what I wanna mention. And I couldn't because uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Well, great. I just want to let everyone know we're talking to the director of Women of Steel, uh, Bada Jabi. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A portal and we'll get to them as time allows. And it uh, looks like there's a question here. Um, someone wants to know, was the woman taking care of her family because her husband was disabled? So I guess yeah. they want to know, is that the only reason she was doing that? Or is this something that's common? <laughs> uh, no, this is not common in the Middle East. Usually the, the gender rule is that the man is working and the woman, in the, she's taking care of the home. But because he was disabled, she take the opportunity and she take the chance and she went out to find a job. Even if the job is very tough, but she was really looking to support her family because her husband is disabled and they don't have any, any income from anywhere else. So she, she, she's working to, to survive actually with her family. So, so, so how, how, how do people see that? If they see a woman working, do they question it or does she have to explain why she's working? In, in Jordan, it's... it's uh, this is the problem when I say I, I, people, they don't care anymore. Nobody asks. Everyone is taking care of himself. And it's, it's, a, it's sad, you know, it's one community and nobody cares. Nobody asks her why you are doing that. Even, if, even though the job is really tough, it's, it's really hard. And I was following her every day and I can tell you, it's really tough, it's really hard. It's not healthy because she's dealing with Recycles. Okay, another question that we have is, um, 
Why did you call the film Woman of Steel? Is it because she's a very strong woman? Uh, the original name is in English, uh, is in Arabic, Ukht Rjal. But uh, because it's expression, there is no like, I cannot, like, I cannot translate it. So I used Woman of Steel because this woman has a big relation with the steel, with the metals, with the iron, with, with whatever, like, uh, and uh, she's really strong. She's really strong and she's really tough. And uh, I believe that this is only because she's working, but she, in the end of the day, she is a woman. She is really soft. She's emotional, but she's strong when you need that strength. Absolutely, absolutely. A, a, a very fitting title. Another question we have is, do you know in American dollars, how much money she got for selling the steel? Uh, no, like, let me try do it now. I can uh, do it okay. on my calculator. All right, uh, you, 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 you smart students out there can figure that out too, <laughs> as well. So uh, 13, uh, $13, 13 Okay, so is that, uh, based on the economy, is that a, a lot of money, a little bit of money or? It's, it's, it's really bad because okay. uh, this, is, this is bad because our income in Jordan are really less comparing to what we need to spend, comparing to the cost. Uh, nice. It's really expensive, but she's struggling. And I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. It's bigger than um, Muhammad. It's bigger than this family. It's a whole issue. And I, I mentioned that in the end of the film with a full sequence. Right. So um, I know you made this and um, you finished it last year in 2020. Um, do you still keep in touch with her? So how is she doing? Uh, I'm still in touch with her and with her husband. And uh, I, unfortunately, she is not doing well because oh. of the COVID. Uh, even though a lot of people tried to help her after the film, uh, but still the situation is really complicated in Jordan, especially after the lockdown, especially after the increase in, in the cases and COVID. But uh, what can we do? Like it's, 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 it's moving right now to be more than financial issue. And it's not only financial, by the way, but, but because I want to mention that it's not only financial, it's also about how we need to respect women in the Middle East because they can do a lot. And right now she's struggling. I hope that uh, uh, she will, her, her situation will get better. But uh, if you ask me about now, exactly now, she's struggling, she's in a bad situation because of the COVID also. Um, okay, well, I, I, I really wish her well with that and hopefully things will um, turn around for her and her family. Um, has she seen the documentary? And so what is her reaction? Uh, her husband was so proud. He loves the film. Uh, and for her, she, 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 she has a dream to walk in the red carpet. And unfortunately, and I promised her that. And because I, I used to have uh, my first premiere in Qatar, it was a local premiere uh for the film i tried to get her a visa but bec again because of the covid uh she couldn't come uh but if this happened one day and uh, the thing get open and the festival is is back and i get the chance to bring her to one of those festival uh i would love to do that i would love to come with her on the red carpet and tell the world that we have a great a uh, woman such as Umm Muhammad, and I'm really proud of her, actually. I'm really proud that we have this role model in our country uh, and in our region. Oh, great. Yes, I, I hope that dream does happen one day. And what about the response to other people? Um, how have they reacted to the documentary? Uh, it's, it's different. Uh, there is people, it's, uh, it's, it's different from 
a generation to another, from country to another, it's it's totally different. And actually, this film put me in a problem while filming because the people in Jordan, especially in the industrial area, the sequence where she's selling the uh, the scene where she's selling the recycles, uh, she, she, the people there refuse to show that they are not supporting her. The people refuse to show their faces and they, 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 they try to attack me once while filming. So it's different, but most of the people love the film because it showcase that we have a strong woman in the Middle East. And this is always a problem because, as I told you, the mindset and the gender rule in the Middle East is always putting the woman as very weak per, uh, human and she cannot do this, she can do this. And from my perspective, from my personal view as a director and from a human, I believe that nobody can tell you what to do and what not to do. And I believe that women need more empowering in the Middle East, need more empowering in our region. And because of that, I did the film. Because of that, I, I want this story to go beyond the Middle East. I want people in, the, in, in America and in Europe to, to see Umm Muhammad as an example. And every time someone came to me and told me, this is a bad story, you are showcasing a struggling, a bad story or whatever, I'm telling them as a documentarian, I'm, I'm just a mirror here. I'm, I'm putting myself as a mirror, showing a real story in the street that nobody want to point it. Nobody want to say that this is happening. I don't know why. I don't understand why they don't want to say it, but I'm so proud that she gave me this opportunity and I want to show it more and more because she gave me the trust. This is my only role here. To, to, to tell her story. I didn't ask her to do that. This is her life. I'm just a mirror. And what you are watching in the film, it's just one day of her life. She's struggling more. She's facing more. Wow. Well, we really need more people like you to be advocates for, um, you know, women's rights and um, human rights uh, more so, you know, to get that out there. It's just, um, that's just remarkable how, you know, some people were against that, you know, attacking you, but small steps like this can make a difference. And especially through film, hopefully that will resonate and other people will get on board with that. I, I commend you for this effort. Thank you. So, um, well, what's, what's next for you? Uh, what, are you what are you working on next that we can probably see in the future? Uh... Right now, I'm working on a story, another story in Jordan, about a, ref a refugee camp, a Palestinian refugee camp, uh, and how people live there. Uh, I'm focusing more in a football club and soccer club called the Wahdat, uh, and their members. I don't have a still a treatment, but uh, I have like. My, my, uh, what I want to do right now, I want to tell more human story about uh, the Middle East and about my country. And uh, I want people to know about us more through films. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to do right now. So uh, it's uh, it will be, it, I will start after the COVID, of course, because I cannot travel right now. But... Uh, there is, there, is, there is a vision in my head that I want to do things more about Jordan, uh, about the people there. Uh, and I don't want to call them the third class people, but uh, unfortunately, the, the economic uh, situation called them that, that they are the third class people. Uh, I want to tell more about their stories. Uh, I care a lot about this type of things. So I'm planning right now to go and scout. Uh, I met two people. One of them is homeless, uh, but uh, I'm not. I'm not done yet with the the, the researching. Uh, uh, like I'm not done yet with the process of the research. Right. Okay. Well, I, I wish you the um on the best with that. And um, if it's 
anything like the passion you had in Women of Steel, I'm sure we are in for uh, another good piece as well. So um, Obata, thank you so much for taking some time out today to join us and to share some insight on this um, really important um, documentary. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. And thank you for giving me this chance to talk to you. Thank you. And all of you, thank you. If you hear me, you're, of course. You're quite welcome. And I'd like to thank you, our audience, for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the current 45th Cleveland International Film Festival or any of our upcoming festivals, please continue to follow us on social media or visit clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>